service of Holy Eucharist, right too, begins on page 355 in your Red Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear people of God, It was our Lord Jesus himself who said, Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters who have been the innocent victims of recent tragic shootings, praying that they may rest from their labors and enter into the light of God's eternal Sabbath rest. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose days are without end and whose mercies cannot be numbered, Make us, we humbly pray you, deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of life, and grant eternal rest unto those whose lives were tragically and violently taken from them, especially those who perished in the mass shooting in Highland Park, Illinois. Catherine Goldstein, Irina McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy, Jacqueline Sundheim, Stephen Strauss, Nicholas Toledo Zaragoza, Eduardo Ulvaldo. Receive them into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us also pray for the families of these victims and all those who suffer as a result of these tragedies. Almighty God, look with pity upon the sorrows of your servants for whom we pray. Remember them, Lord, in mercy. Nourish them with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up the light of your countenance upon them and give them peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from St. Paul's Epistle to the Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus 
and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. 
Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Our neighbors don't like us right now. And I know that because of a post that I saw a Nextdoor app. Now, those of you who don't know what Nextdoor app is, it's an app for neighborhoods where people can post questions about their neighborhoods or comments or sightings, whatever type of stuff. And so on July 6, I received my daily digest of posts from the day beforehand, and I noticed two interesting titles on it, and both were posted by our immediate neighbor. The first read, we have lived here 18 years and always had neighbors that let the kids enjoy fireworks in my cul-de-sac. That post had 11 likes and 21 comments. The second read, 55 and over neighborhoods available. Maybe that would suit your needs better. Just in case you need time to prepare, Mr. Neighbor, directly to the right of my house. And then the title cut off. Seeing that it was posted by my neighbor on the left, so knowing who she was talking about, I clicked so I could see more about what she posted in the comments that were there. But both had been deleted. Thank God. So I don't know what else was there. But this is why she is mad at us. On Tuesday, July 5th, I went to bed at the time I typically go to bed, which is 8 p.m., because I get up at 4 a.m. in the morning. At 11.35 p.m., fireworks started occurring right outside my window. And so I called down to my husband and I said, are fireworks permitted tonight and what time are they supposed to be cut off? At which point he looked it up and said, 10 p.m. I said, can you please go talk to our neighbors? I've got to wake up in four hours. So he went outside and he simply said, how much longer are you going to be setting off fireworks? And they said, not much longer. And he said, well, then please wrap it up quickly because you woke up my wife and she has to wake up at four. So the fireworks went a little bit longer. Now, technically, by the law, I'm in the right. And yet, the anger that I have created 
And the continuing destruction of this relationship with the neighbor maybe means I need to relook at that law and try to understand better how to be in relationship with her. Now, this is exactly the same sort of question the lawyer in today's gospel, it's the same question with which he is wrestling. Now, lawyers in that day and time are a little bit different than lawyers now. These lawyers knew the 613 Old Testament laws forwards and backwards. So when Jesus asked him, do you know what you read there? Yes, he knew what he read there. But that's not really the question. That question has a secondary meaning, and that meaning is, do you understand what you read there? Now, you can imagine if you go to somebody who knows the law forward and backwards, and you say, do you understand it? You might get a little defensive, right? And so this lawyer gets defensive. And so he goes out to justify himself. In other words, at the end of it, he wants Jesus to say to him, you are in the right. You know it and you understand it. And so what he decides to do is to lean on a technicality in the definition. What does it mean to be a neighbor? What he quickly discovers is that neighbor has nothing to do with location, but has to do with an act. It almost becomes a verb to neighbor someone. And so this lawyer who has gone out to essentially fall back on the rules and to show that he is right because he has relied on those rules has shown something completely different. And I really can't help but wonder, aren't we like that lawyer? I mean, how many times do we do things because it's the rules or it's the law, even if it's hurtful to somebody else, but we justify ourselves because it's what the law says. That's the rule. What they did, it's wrong. And while my example is a pretty minor one overall, sometimes we justify ourselves because we are so fearful of what it means for our salvation, right? That was the initial question after all. What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? We fall back on the rules because we want to make sure we're saved. And yet Jesus turns all of that upside down. And Jesus gives us the story that kind of like breaks down the barriers. In the story, there's two people. They know the laws, a priest and a Levite. And yet they make a choice to put distance between them and and the person who is hurt. They walk on the other side of the road. It's the person of a different nationality with different customs and practices that actually ends up choosing to enter the pain and the brokenness of the person who had been wronged. They don't let all those barriers exist. They enter it. And what's interesting is not that they do everything to fix the problem. The Samaritan does what they can. They help the person with what resources they have. And then when they have to move on, they turn that care over to another person. Showing that type of grace and love and mercy is what it means to neighbor another person. When we think
think about neighboring other people, I think it's important to recognize that sometimes we are the person sitting by that road that has been battered and bruised and broken. I certainly felt that way on July 6th. But also sometimes we're the lawyer. We are the very person who tries to justify why we don't enter other people's pains. We hold up law and hold victory over them, not caring that it's hurting somebody else. And when we notice that, we can also step back and remember that God knows we cannot justify ourselves. We can't ever live up to those 613 laws. God reminds us that it is all about love, that the laws themselves cannot become a God, but that they should always lead us to being in relationship with the other person. And we can remember, as people who have both been battered and broken and also have tried to justify ourselves, that at the end of the day, the only thing that justifies us is Jesus' own faithfulness. For Jesus entered our batteredness and our brokenness and showed us mercy and saved us. And because Jesus has shown us that mercy, we can show mercy to others as well. So what do we do in situations like this when we know we're right? Because darn, I know I'm right. Those fireworks should not have gone off at 1135. Well, one thing we can do is, first of all, y'all can remind me that it's not about being right. That's about being in relationship with my neighbor. And so us as a church, we can hold each other accountable to showing love. And when this happens again on New Year's Eve, because by the way, it will, it has been going on for five years, maybe instead of waiting till New Year's Eve or New Year's Day when it happens again, maybe a week before, y'all can help remind me, maybe Christmas Eve, y'all remind me that I need to have a conversation with my neighbor. Maybe it looks like me going to my neighbor and saying, hey, I know you want your kids to have fun. I know you want to be able to sell off the fireworks. And guess what? I actually do like fireworks. Let's talk about days where that works the best and maybe include our whole cul-de-sac to find out what that looks like. Because if we as a church always turn each other towards love and to how we can find ways to show that love, that's what it looks like to be Christ's hands and feet and to remember that we have been shown mercy and we are called to be the people who show mercy. Amen. Well, let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, form four, are found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the whole world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Let us remember before God those whose homes, communities, or nations are torn by strife, war, or violence, especially for the people of Ukraine and for the Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Let us remember before God those of our parish who have requested our prayers, especially those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and all those whom we now name in silence. Let us also remember before God the General Convention of the Episcopal Church as they meet in Baltimore this week. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Let us remember before God those who suffer as a result of racism, gun violence, or hate crimes. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Let us remember before God Commander J.D. Ness, Artie McCall, Tom Brunner, Sally Lewis, and Francis Allward. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life.
Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to worship. We're glad you joined us today. If you're a visitor or newcomer, please take a moment to fill out one of the blue welcome cards found in your pew and then place it in one of the alms basins during the offertory immediately following the announcements. You're welcome to join us in the McKissick family courtyard, weather permitting, following the service for refreshments. Sunday, July 24th, uh, we'll celebrate Christmas in July. There'll be a special worship service at the 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. service in the church. And at 5.30 p.m. that Sunday, everyone's invited to the All Saints Center for movie night and a pizza party. Children, please wear your pajamas and bring a pillow and blanket. The movie will be Home Alone. So please RSVP using the link listed in your bulletin. See the community news in your bulletin for more announcements. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with praise.
Our worship continues with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Stop. Uh -huh. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.